Just over six weeks ago, I was in Hanoi and I purchased this Honda Super Dream. And we've been driving it all around the north, down through the center of Vietnam, all the way to this beautiful UNESCO World Heritage Site of Hoi Yan. We've had some incredible adventures and some amazing drives. In today's video, we're gonna be documenting us driving through what it can only be described as the middle of nowhere. <laughs> There's really not that much between Hoi An and Dalat, further south up into the mountains. There is the coastal highway, which has a lot of beaches and probably nice scenes, and it would be much quicker, but I don't like the highway and I don't fancy it. So we're gonna be heading back inland, up and over the central highlands. So join me in Super Dreamy as we leave Hoi An and head towards Dalat. Let's go. Okay then, say goodbye to Hoi An. If you watched the previous video, we had a great time here. This is that famous Japanese bridge. And these are the famous mustard colored buildings. And as you can see, lots of people here. This place is super popular. Because as you saw in the previous video, it's gorgeous. Especially at nighttime, this place is an absolute dream. Let me just get you centered and looking nice. So day one is a monster. Seven and a half hours, according to Google Maps, to a city called Pleiku. As you can see, isn't it gorgeous here? All these leather bag shops and touristy stuff. It's, uh, it is magical. Hoi An, you do need to put on your bucket list. So let's get out of here. Let's get on the highway for a little bit. I think we've got to do about 15 minutes on the highway and then we're going to get off it and head up into the mountains. If you've been following this journey, you'll know that I really don't like to go on the highway and I avoid it at all costs, but we did need to nip on it for about 15 kilometers or so. And as expected, it was pretty busy and just you just don't get any personal space. The buses and the trucks will overtake, beat their horns really loud behind you, move you along, move you out the way. And the whole experience on a little Honda anyway is very unpleasant. <laughs> That being said, once we got off the highway, things started getting really rural and really beautiful very quickly. And as you can see, sometimes when I'm doing these longer drives where I know I'm not gonna be filming too much, I actually like to put my backpack on the handlebars in that gap between my crotch and the speedometer. It just helps with you know my back pain. And I was loving my new custom-made, tailor-made Hoi An driving shirts. Long sleeves, nice material, really soft and elasticated, perfect for driving. And things were looking great and I was super happy to be on the open road again, away from the crowds of Da Nang and Hoi An. However, unfortunately, because this is Vietnam, a very beautiful sunny day can always turn very quickly into a stormy, rainy, miserable afternoon. I'm cold, I am wet, I'm a drenched rat. <laughs> Thankfully, this town 
in the middle of nowhere here up in the mountains whilst the rain has subsided slightly there's a guy here I've found a band me place and I have to say not only was that the cheapest band me I've ever had on this trip only 10,000 Vietnamese dong but I think it was the best one I've ever had it was so spicy the crispy baguette was perfect we've got 150 kilometers three and a half hours left and it's half past three and it gets dark at six it's gonna be tight Morning. So I didn't make it to Pleiku yesterday. I just ran out of light and I don't like driving at night, a bit dangerous. And so about 50 kilometers shy of Pleiku was a small city. Found a nice hotel, had a hot bath and an early night and recharged for today. Just outside of Pleiku, I've got some cool things to show you. The first one behind Super Dreamy here. Look at that beautiful little hill. There's something very, very special about this hill. Try to guess what it is whilst I show you some beautiful drone shots. Now, obviously, it's gorgeous and it's covered in what looks to be farmland. I'm not quite sure what they're growing, but what they are growing all around this area, here's another clue, is coffee and there's beautiful tea plantations, lots of amazing rice fields. This entire area is extremely fertile. And now that you've been flying up in the sky looking down upon this hill, any guesses? what this is, why this is special, come on, <laughs> no, it's not a volcano, it's, I'm just kidding, it is a volcano, it's a volcano, this area of Vietnam has a few volcanoes, this is one of them, obviously the crater has collapsed in on itself and it's been extinct for a long, long time, but this area is littered with little volcanoes, and so the ground is super fertile, isn't that beautiful, isn't this a beautiful part of the country? Let me share with you one more beautiful place in this area, north of Pleiku. Then we'll drive through south towards another town. It's gonna to be another six or seven hour drive today and we won't make it to Dalat. Dalat is 10 hours from here and I just can't cover that distance on this bike in one day, unfortunately. My back, my ass just won't allow it. Wow, it's amazing to think that this beautiful pagoda, absolutely gorgeous, is just in here in the middle of nowhere, amongst tea plantations, coffee plantations, an endless countryside. We're still an hour from Pleiku, the town, and this is here. We've got that beautiful music playing, there's nobody here, and these beautiful Buddhist flags are flapping in the wind, and even, <laughs> even in the rain, this is nice. I'm not religious and I'm certainly not Buddhist and all through my travels when I was in Thailand I think we went to over a hundred temples 
and each one was lovelier than the next and each one had its own unique atmosphere and normally I walk around and I get the shots I need and then I pack up and leave it's not my religion and it's not my place to stand around and get in the way I get what I need and I normally leave but this place is so peaceful I feel an immense amount of peace I think it's the rain the distant thunder this lady singing this song man I hope it's not copyright I hope I can put this in the edit for you I've had a 20 minute spell here I was planning where to go next how to get to Pliku how to get past Pliku all of a sudden I found myself turning my phone off and just <laughs> being still I very rarely do that this temple encourages you to be still take a breath and enjoy the moment anyway Come here, come here. Morning. Oh, hang on a minute. Why have you done that? <laughs> Morning. <laughs> Welcome back. I think this is day three since we left Hoi An. These sections of my trips, I did quite a few of these sections in Thailand over the time. And this is our second or third one here in Vietnam. These sections where I just have to drive long distances to get to the most interesting places take a lot on, take their toll a lot on my back, my ass, my neck, my wrists and my brain it's uh, it's hard work driving over three days about 21 hours on busy chaotic Vietnamese roads that don't have traffic lights and you just have to cross like this and hope you don't get smashed we've seen quite a lot I'm not regretting coming this way we've seen the beautiful pagoda that was amazing the volcano yesterday as well and yeah okay it's been cold and it's been raining and everything's a bit gray and dull in this town but what's that uh yep yeah trying to do a monologue whilst driving in vietnam sometimes fall apart <laughs> Anyway, look, I'm, I'm happy to get out of this, this town. I've got about a five hour drive and I'm gonna take you to somewhere spectacular. Two places that could be absolutely spectacular, especially, here's a clue, because of the wet rain that we've been having the last few days. And then we should make it to Dalat by about five o'clock this afternoon. I booked into a nice little hotel. We'll check in there. And that will be the end of our three, maybe four day drive from Hoi An to Dalat via the slightly more scenic central inland 
slow road. Much better than that quick coastal highway. We would be there by now. We would have been there yesterday. But I'm not regretting this. So come with me. One last day. One last section of the video. So we're not quite there yet, about three, three and a half, four hours into it. Not quite at the beautiful surprise, uh, but I've had to pull over for two reasons. The first one is I'm broken. My back, my ass, my neck, my wrist. This particular section of the road is beautiful. The tarmac and the scenes here, it's incredible, but it's been really, really bumpy lots of potholes, very slow going and uh, difficult to drive and stressful and uh, not very fun for the body or the bike and I've just pulled over and I've realized that something really important has snapped so you know that I have these side boxes on the side of my bike and that's where I store my camera equipment and my spare camera equipment I have pretty much a spare of everything um, because if stuff breaks I've got to keep the show on the road Unfortunately, one of the side brackets that holds those boxes to the bike has snapped um, and there's still one section of it holding onto the bike, but that is not ideal. You can see here, look at the angle that that box is now facing. And that particular box holds lots and lots of spare expensive equipment. I'm gonna try and get everything sorted. We'll get on the road and fingers crossed, we make it all the way to Dalat with the side box still attached so we can get it welded fixed. It's a beautiful place, but I'm broken back, neck, ass, and my bike. Wow, what a nice surprise. It's not blasting, you know, there's not a huge amount of water cascading over, which is surprising given the amount of rain that's coming down in this area today. But it is fantastic and it was definitely worth the two hour detour plus the 25,000 dong entrance, which is less than a dollar very cheap there is food and drinks here there is this alien rockage <laughs> that's definitely not a word but you know what I mean this terrain feels a little bit like you're on an alien planet I'm gonna soak this up until I think the rains come and we are definitely 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 getting wet on the way up to Dalat let's go up in the sky get the drone up before this rain comes in and let me show you the scale of this because it looks beautiful right but wow Oh, and I can see a man at the top. I should have gone up there. Anyway. <laughs> We made it to Dalat. <laughs> Took three full days to get here from Hoi An. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Dalat looks nice. 
it's got fresh air, it's up here in the mountains. There's a lovely little lake that I'm 100% going for a run around. In the next video, I'll share with you where I'm staying and what I get up to. There's lots of things to do here. It's very popular, and as you can see, it's bustling, it's alive and well. Dalat seems to be the place to be. Almost looks like a skiing resort, but without the snow. Anyway, I'll share with you Dalat in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'm super glad that we didn't take the dusty, speedy highway to Natrang. That seemed to have been a better idea, what we've just experienced. My ass is sore, my back is messed up, and my bike is broken. But I'll replace and fix all of those problems with a good night's sleep, a good mechanic, and nothing like a cold beer can't fix. <laughs>